Look at how many people are in the Fang Chang Hospital. All of them are set free tonight, and they are all sent home. Look, how many people from the Fang Chang Hospital? Sending large numbers of people to Fang Chang Hospitals for quarantine was a major part of the strict zero COVID policy of the Chinese Communist government over the past three years. On December 7, 2022, a breaking point was reached when the Communist Party suddenly lifted the restrictions without warning. Many Fang Tsang hospitals across the country began sending home people who had been locked up. However, COVID-19 is spreading in China at an alarming rate, infecting a massive number of people and causing numerous suspected deaths that can't be verified by official sources. What the public consents is that crematoriums in major cities are overwhelmed. These videos show that funeral parlors or crematoriums across the country are full with long lines of hearses waiting to burn the bodies. This is a long line of people collecting urns in Tianjin, China. We have more footage showing multiple hospitals filled with bodies, with the living walking among them. We hesitate to show them due to their sensitive nature. A Beijing resident describes his experience after the passing of his loved one. I haven't slept a single minute since 6 a.m. yesterday. Last night, within two to three hours, 20 people came into the morgue. The most infuriating thing is that all the crematoriums in Beijing now have to wait at least a month for a scheduled cremation. I am now trying to find a way to jump the queue. To jump the queue, the least one has to pay now is 30,000 renminbi, that is, 4,300 U.S. dollars. The 30,000 I mentioned is to be able to cut in line in the next three or five days to be able to get in to burn to cremate. There is really no other way. I just called four crematoriums. Not one went through. All lines were busy. Just now, Changping District Crematorium got through. They said they couldn't handle the volume in their own district, so don't send it to them. Try to look for solutions in the district where you live. On December 19th, a senior member of Beijing's political and legal system told Radio Free Asia, on condition of anonymity, that before the white paper movement in Beijing, and even during the 20th National Congress in October, in-hospital infections in major hospitals were already very bad. By early December, things had gotten completely out of control. It was only after the official announcement of the death of former Communist Party leader Jiang Zemin that information about the infection in Beijing was gradually released to the public. Before the loosening of epidemic prevention measures, widespread infections had occurred in Beijing's medical system. Many medical staff and elderly people were infected and the death toll was high. Funeral parlors were overloaded and the medical system had already collapsed. The senior official pointed out that his relative was infected during recuperation in the hospital and then moved to many of the best hospitals in Beijing and eventually died of the new coronavirus. But the death conclusion written by the doctor was a urinary tract infection. His immediate family member was cremated five days after passing away in the hospital. He said, I can say that it isn't bad to have one out of 100 people promoted to my position, and I'm already very modest to say that I belong to the 1%. But this time, one's ranking doesn't mean that one has the ability to save loved ones because each place is already beyond its capacity. Those elderly people who were delayed in the hospital, including those who died, some of them had very high ranks. As a member of the political and legal system, he says the government would blame the white paper movement for the massive outbreak. As a first-hand witness, he is outraged. Now, although the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, has lifted the restrictions, the streets of many cities remain empty. 
Public transportation use has plummeted as many businesses have closed due to employee illnesses and most schools have closed and switched to online delivery. The most packed place, besides crematoriums and funeral parlors, is the hospitals. This is a hospital in Beijing. In the video, a Beijing citizen took his mother to the hospital, only to be told that the hospital had no oxygen and lacked all kinds of equipment that could save her life. This is Shenzhen, where people line up in long lines for fever clinics. Shanghai imposed a harsh two-plus-month city lockdown in the spring of 2022. The COVID-19 virus began spreading almost unchecked among the megalopolis's 25 million people after the Communist Party relaxed the control measures. Here in China's Anhui province, people crowded into a clinic just after it opened for a clinic bed. In Tibet, a sparsely populated region, there are also large numbers of people with fevers. <laughs> In this video, we see a father kneeling down to a doctor in a hospital, crying that his child's fever is serious and he can't get a number in the queue. He begged the doctor for help. The doctor also knelt down, saying that there was nothing he could do about it. Oh, everyone, pay attention. You see that the infection in Bindao is really serious. People go to the clinic for injections and there is no place to sit. They come by car and hang the bottle next to their cars for an IV drip. What a spectacle. It is a big spectacle, sitting directly in the car, and then the doctor helps to give the injection. It has become like this nowadays. The most worrisome is that the COVID-19 epidemic situation in mainland China has entered a black hole in terms of information, news, and updates. On December 20, 2022, the Chinese Health and Medical Commission reset the standard for death from COVID-19. Deaths caused by pneumonia and respiratory failure after contracting COVID-19 would be classified as COVID-19 deaths. Deaths caused by other underlying diseases, such as cardiovascular disease, resulting in death for infected people will not get that classification. Some professionals responded that reclassification would miss so many cases that it would be pointless. However, even if the standard is not revised, the official death toll in China has been very low. China's National Health Commission announced two deaths on December 19th, the first reported deaths since December 3rd. The official death toll has been low since restrictions were lifted on December 7th. According to official statistics, China has had only 5,237 COVID-19-related deaths during the course of the COVID-19 outbreak, including the two most recently announced cases, a very small fraction of the country's 1.4 billion population. No one knows the real death figures. 
if we calculate based on the cremation capacity of the 12 funeral parlors in Beijing, at least 2,000 bodies are being cremated every day in Beijing alone, which is about five times or even higher than that of the same period in previous years. However, the Beijing Civil Affairs Bureau refused to disclose the total number of people who died and were cremated in Beijing since this winter, citing a lack of data. The Chinese Health Commission also downplayed concerns raised by the U.S. and some epidemiologists about the possibility of virus mutation, saying the likelihood of a new, more pathogenic strain was low. The overall trend of mutations now is mainly about immune escape. Immune escape makes it more contagious for people again. Even if its contagiousness does not increase, its advantages for transmission will increase. It is relatively unlikely that the virus will increase both its contagiousness and lethality at the same time. Will a new strain of both greater transmission and lethality appear? This possibility is even smaller. In the official media, Chinese epidemic prevention experts also keep the same tone with the central government. Previously, an academician and respiratory expert, Zhong Nanshan, said at the National University Anti-Epidemic Lecture on December 15th, that the percentage of infections within one year after one infection with Omicron was so small that it was equivalent to one vaccination. The CCP's 180-degree turn in policy plus information black holes and confusing official statements makes it hard to tell if they are true or not and have left Chinese people in confusion and with different attitudes towards the epidemic tsunami. I am from Urjiao City, Shandong Province. I work in a cold storage place. Alas, after three years of torture, the virus is now said to be just a cold. Having had three injections, they turn out to be fake medicine. Having been locked down for over a year, I am told that this is a trap set up by foreign countries. Haha, ha, restrictions are about to be lifted soon. I heard that the medicine, Lianhua Qingwen, is selling like crazy and the price has doubled. More importantly, when you buy it, you have to pair it with other medicines, like the ones for cough, sputum, fever, etc. It's just like coffee, when you buy it, you have to pair it with cream. In the last round, we followed suit to snatch and stock up on rice, oil, and noodles, and hoarded vegetables while waiting for the city to be locked down. Now what are we doing? We are hoarding medicines while waiting for the flu to come. Ha ha ha, I won't follow this time. I can't keep up with this wave of operations. There isn't much money left in my pocket. I am worried that there are some sort of forces manipulating behind the scenes. I have to save some money for the Chinese New Year, so I have something decent to eat. I can't just have medicine instead of food for the New Year. The reopening has been slightly burdensome. It's a bit of a burden to suddenly reopen when the supply of medications was not sufficiently prepared, but I support reopening. I am not worried. Anyways, the people around me, loads of them are positive. But I am not positive yet. I have been taking ABC medicine vitamins. Death can't be avoided. If you get it, you get it. After you're infected, it depends on the individual's health to decide if you are well or not. We try as far as it's possible to not spread it to the elderly and children, that's all I can say. In fact, a new and more deadly variant of the Omicron strain has likely developed in China. A woman in Jiangsu province was surprised to find her hair turning gray when she had a high fever. Gosh, what's going on here? Is this my hair? On December 20th, Chinese social media Weibo showed that a woman in Anhui province had a high fever after being diagnosed with COVID-19. And by day four, her face turned black and gooey as if disfigured. The woman uploaded photos of herself before and after she was infected and posted that even her own mother wouldn't be able to recognize her now. A man in Tianjin was confirmed positive, 
Not only did he feel pain and chills all over his body, but he also found that his tongue and teeth had turned black. From the footage we have seen from China, this wave of the outbreak that hits like a tsunami has claimed not only the lives of the elderly, but also of children, young and middle-aged people. Because of the sensitive images, we have only picked the ones least likely to trigger YouTube's yellow label. The magnitude of the outbreak in China is perhaps more evident in the reaction of other countries and organizations outside China. WHO is very concerned over the evolving situation in China, with increasing reports of severe disease. The toll of the virus uh, is of uh, concern to uh, the rest of the world, uh, given the size of uh, China's GDP, given the size of China's economy. Uh, it's not only uh, good for China uh, to be in a stronger position vis-a-vis -vis COVID, but uh, it's good for uh, the rest of the world as well. Um, we, uh, the United States continues to be a leading force uh, for countries around the world in the provision of uh, vaccines and helping countries uh, overcome uh, the acute phase uh, of the virus. Uh, we certainly hope uh, that will be the case uh, before long in the PRC as well. Berlin has sent its first batch of BioNTech COVID-19 vaccines to China to be administered initially to German expatriates, a German government spokesperson said on December 21st. It's the first foreign coronavirus vaccine to be delivered to the country. According to official numbers, there are about 20,000 German nationals currently in China. A report earlier this month said that Germany's health ministry had granted a permit allowing China's Sinovac COVID-19 vaccine to be imported to Germany to be given to Chinese citizens in that country. Beijing has so far insisted on using only domestically produced vaccines, which aren't based on Western mRNA technology but on more traditional technologies. In a recent episode, we reported that the West wanted to help curtail a domestic and possibly global health and economic crisis in China in a way that the CCP government might be willing to accept. But as of now, the prideful CCP has said no, because accepting Western aid would not only embarrass the CCP, but also expose its propaganda, namely, the superiority of the CCP's model of governance. Facts have shown that China's COVID-19 policy has provided maximum protection to people's lives and health, minimized COVID-19's impact on social economic development, and bought precious time for understanding the virus on the basis of science, for research and development of vaccines and therapeutics, and for vaccinating more people across the country. We have achieved the most effective results at a minimum cost. We believe that with the concerted efforts of the Chinese people, we will usher in a new stage of steady and orderly economic and social development. We are ready to continue to work with the international community to meet the challenges of the epidemic, better protect people's lives and health, restore healthy world economic growth, and build a community of health for mankind. Against such a backdrop, perhaps Chinese people will have to rely on themselves for epidemic prevention in the future. Everyone is the first person in charge of his or her own health, the Communist Party's official media has touted. Many Chinese people are now turning to food therapy for epidemic prevention. For example, canned yellow peaches, which had been excluded by many health-conscious consumers because of their high sugar content, have become a popular commodity after rumors on the internet in China said that they can alleviate the symptoms of the epidemic. On December 8th, a doctor said at a press conference on the prevention and control of the epidemic in Shanghai that those without symptoms or those with nasal congestion can drink water with fresh lemon slices. As a result, lemon soon became one of the hot commodities. Behind the hot sale of canned yellow peaches and lemons is that many people cannot get hold of any cold and fever medicine, while people around them are heavily infected with the outbreak. Here are the people in Guangdong province, unpacking boxes of medicine at the entrance of a pharmacy so as to snatch them. Um, 
Here, people who can't buy medicine kneel at the door of a pharmacy, begging for medicine to save their family members. Chinese citizens, in a position to do so, have turned to personal networks around the world to seek medicines. The resulting panic for medicine has spread outside mainland China, with generic versions of Tylenol and Advil selling out in pharmacies in Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan, and even Australia, prompting local pharmacies to impose restrictions on sales. I have family members who are currently in the mainland, but I feel the medical regulations there are very strict, and first, they are unable to go out and purchase medicine. My grandfather is now living in a nursing home, and he isn't even allowed to leave or let anybody in. Every delivery package must be sanitized before being brought in. I heard that there's no cold or fever medicine available on the market now, so we thought that we should quickly buy some here in Hong Kong and quickly send them back to the mainland. I was worried that when I first bought the medicine, I had heard that it may take up to a month to deliver them back home. At this point, the only thing we can do is send the medication as soon as possible. There is nothing else we can do. We have a lot of buyers, including foreigners and Chinese customers, but the most obvious are Chinese. They would grab as much as they can. Suppose if we have 20 boxes in stock, they will come to ask how much we have in total. If we say we have 20, they will take all 20, but we have to limit the number of purchases. This tsunami of outbreaks has led more Chinese to question the CCP's ability to govern. The question they ask now is, why are we always on the hook to self-rescue? We'll report on related topics in a later episode.